Welcome to the Power of Your Mind podcast. I'm Victoria Gallagher, your host. Have you been attempting to use law of attraction or hypnosis to attract financial abundance, a soulmate, or career success? Would you like to be happy, motivated, and successful, have better health, enjoy more fulfilling relationships? overcome struggle and gain mastery over your life, then join me on this amazing self-help podcast where you'll unleash the power of your mind. I'll be sharing 20 years of wisdom and techniques of hypnotherapy, law of attraction, visualization, meditation, personal growth, positive affirmations, and other effective methods to help you tap into the great power which resides in your mind and become the best version of yourself. Well, hello and welcome to today's episode of the Power of Your Mind podcast. You're listening to episode number 96. I'm Victoria Gallagher, Law of Attraction coach and number one best-selling author of Practical Law of Attraction, Align Yourself with the Manifesting Conditions and Successfully Attract Your Desires. I'm also a clinical hypnotherapist, founder of HipTalk.com and HypnoCloud apps, so be sure to stop by HipTalk.com and sign up for your free self-hypnosis video training course. And for our listeners who found us through the Power of Your Mind podcast, you can get 35% off your first order of hypnosis downloads when you apply the code podcast to your shopping cart. Also, be sure to download our latest HypnoCloud app from iTunes and Google Play stores. So today, I have a repeat guest, a wonderful special guest with me, Joe Vitale. Dr. Joe Vitale is the author of how many books now? I think you said we're up to maybe 80 or so. I don't know. And I had 76 on my uh, thing, but you know, I'm sure it's more than that. I wrote four since then, yeah. Yes, that's amazing. Um, so some of those books you might have heard of before, The Attraction Factor, Life's Missing Instruction Manual, Zero Limits, and his latest book, The Art and Science of Results, plus many, many more. Also, I see back there, Money Love Speed, which is your second to last book. <laughs> right. So these are, you know, a lot of wonderful books. Uh, Joe Vitale is also was one of the featured Law of Attraction speakers in the eye-opening documentary, The Secret Movie, which I guess that's uh, The Secret Movie is coming out again in the... Uh, I don't know if it, that's going to be on hold because of what's going on. It is on, on hold. But... There is a, a Hollywood version of The Secret um, starring some B-list actors, but this is a mainstream movie. It was scheduled for April 8th, but they've moved it out, so it's somewhere later in the year. Right. Okay. All right. Well, we will be on pins and needles looking yeah. for the release of that. Um, but uh, that was based on the best-selling book, The Secret by Rhonda Burns. And beside The Secret, Joe has been in several other movies and TV shows. He was featured in the New York Times and Newsweek and was the world's first self-help singer, songwriter. He's been in uh, 2012's Rolling Stone magazine. He's had several songs recognized and nominated for the Posse Award, which is the known as the Grammys of Positive Music. And Joe's also created a Miracles coaching program and helps people to achieve their dreams by understanding the deeper aspects of the law of attraction and the law of right action. Well, I like that the law of attraction and the law of right action. (laughs) This, (laughs) This man was actually once homeless, if you can believe that. But today, he is a best-selling author who believes in magic and miracles. So today, Joe is going to be talking to us about some of his insights about the art and science of results. And so welcome, and welcome back to the show, Joe. Been looking forward to this. Always great to talk to you, Victoria. When you ask, I just say yes and show up. You do. You do. (laughs) I think you take your lead from from Steve because Steve, not not my husband Steve, who we always have this conversation, not my husband Steve, but Steve uh, Chief Jones, you know, he pretty much, you know, he knows who's in charge. And if I ask, he... (laughs) 
<laughs> deliver. <Yeah>. So <laughs> Dr. Steve's a good guy too. So you're you're hanging around good company, but it's a joy to be with you and thanks for having me back. It's a joy to have you here. So we were just kind of uh, bantering and talking a little bit beforehand and talking about what's right now, just uh, for our listeners who might be listening to this two years from now. Today is April 7th. It's Tuesday, April 7th. And we have been in the midst of a world crisis, a global pandemic, the coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever you want to call that. And it's pretty much, we're all kind of experiencing lockdown. We're all experiencing it in different ways and coping in different ways. You have some people stocking up their entire house. I don't know where they're putting all this stuff. I mean, literally, I mean, I don't know where they are putting it. Right. <laughs> their toilet papers and their hand sanitizer and people are unemployed people, you know, there's, so there's a lot of things going on and, and we're all dealing with it in, in our best way. So how are you dealing with it? Well, I'll tell you, uh, like everybody else, it's a challenge. We're living in times that most of us, probably all of us never thought would ever happen. I'm sure there's survivalists out there who have been planting and plotting and saying, I knew it was going to happen one day, and now their <laughs> yeah. day has come. Their day has the, come. Their day has come. But for the rest of us, we're, we're challenged. I look at all of this, though, in a very metaphysical way. When I hear we have to go inside, I just look at it like we're supposed to go inside ourselves, mm -hmm. not just go in our room in a way the planet has sent us all to our room, which sounds kind of funny, but it sent us to our room. Then it says, go inside. Well, I think it's our opportunity to meditate. It's our opportunity to create. It's our opportunity to reconnect. It's our opportunity to become spiritually awake, if not just spiritually aware. I've actually made some videos on Instagram and Twitter where I said, yeah, there's a conspiracy, but it's a divine conspiracy. Mm -hmm. It's a conspiracy for good. There's actually a benevolent universe who is shaking us, grabbing us by the throat and really saying, I'm trying to get your attention. And it's sending all of us home saying, stay home, stay away from other people. Don't go out there and get into crowds, go inside, which to me is almost like an enforced spiritual retreat. It's almost like the universe said, enough already. We need you to reconnect with divinity or God or source or the universe, whatever the word is that everybody agrees on. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm doing that for myself. I'm spending more time meditating. I was already doing it, but I admit, you know, it's real easy to get caught up in the world and travels would keep me busy. I'd be on planes going all over the world where all of my overseas flights, as I told you before we started, all my overseas gigs, all the flights, all the events, they're canceled. Yeah. They're canceled. So I am, I'm dancing in my place just like everybody else, but I'm looking at it as a spiritual opportunity. That's what I'm really looking at. You know, and, and really, I, I love that, that your take on it, um, you know, and I've heard this earlier, which was, uh, you know, the, the universe has basically sent us to our rooms. <laughs> and I also believe that, you know, what you resist persists. So we've been resisting this message get, that the universe has probably been trying to send right. us for a long, long time. And so it's like, all right, <laughs> you're not going to listen. We're going to force we're going to force listening. And so um, that is, that's exactly what I've been doing is using this time really for more self-improvement. And because how do you, how do you want to, I've got a cat that keeps walking back and forth right in front of my <laughs> computer. <laughs> I love cats. I miss my kitties. It's great to see you. Oh yeah. Let I want to see your cat. Put your cat on camera. I love Here kitties. Whoops. Here we go. Look we at Miss oh Emerald. My. Oh, it looks like a kitty I had one time. What's this kitty's oh, really? name? This is Emerald. Em oh, that's a beautiful name, Emerald. Emerald, yeah. You're, you're in good hands, Emerald. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I think it's a good luck sign when a cat walks across your screen. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Well, so, you know, yeah. So, I, well, I've been using... I've been hmm? saying 
what I've been saying for a while, let me interrupt you for a second here, is um, basically we have to listen to our intuition. And we've all heard that, but most of us don't. And my rule of thumb is if you don't listen to the whisper, it turns into a little bit louder of a voice. If you don't listen to a louder voice, what it does is give you more of a physical impact. Mm -hmm. We have not been listening as a globe, as a culture, as and I don't mean just Americans. I don't know who, where your audience is, but I'm assuming all over the planet. And this is a wake up call for the planet. It's not just in Idaho or Texas or anywhere in particular. This is a planetary wake up call. So we weren't listening. The voice got louder. We still didn't listen. And so now the plug has been pulled and we've been told, all right, everybody go to your room right now. The cool thing is not only is everybody going to the room, but because of the internet, we still have contact. When there were, but can you imagine viruses, doing this without the internet? I mean, that well, they, would be, they did. We had plagues. We had the Spanish flu that went around. Millions of people have been killed because there was no communication to say what was going on. With the internet, we communicate. In fact, we get too much information. But the point is we have support and we can do mm -hmm. things like what you're doing right now. We can still give pep talks to each other. We can still encourage each other. We can still remind each other. And I think that's part of the benefit. Plus, I've been seeing some of the studies that say, you know, ever since traffic started to uh, slow down because people aren't driving to work, the pollution has been disappearing. Exactly. It, it, even in cities like Los Angeles, which sounds like, you know, it would take a century to clean the air. Nope. In a couple of weeks, it was already being clearer. I'm, you just answered my question on that yeah. because I had heard that a lot of the smog was clearing, but I was very specifically wondering about L.A. because I used to live there and it was yeah. smoggier than yeah, it was pretty was smoggy actually, when I left. I was there just months ago for a movie premiere and the sky was brown. And I wasn't used to, and it's like, am I breathing that? And of course I am. So my lungs are turning brown or green or gray or whatever would be a result. But the nice thing is, and these are the positive things we don't look at when we hear, oh my God, there's a pandemic and oh my God, there's a virus and oh my God, this is, you know, scary for most people, if not all of us, we're on alert. We don't see the positive. And that's where I want to come from, from myself and for mm -hmm. whoever's listening to me and whoever's listening right. to you. You know, we want and to remind people there's good things happening. There really is. And, you know, I mean, things could be so much worse. I mean, we're basically, in a way, um, you know, we're kind of like going to war against this, en this, this invisible enemy. And so we're not at being asked to go out and, and yes. risk our lives for this. We're being asked to stay at home, watch right. TV, turn on, <laughs> go online. Yeah. And, and, and because we have the internet, we still have, you know, there's, there's an opportunity. Many people have businesses online like you and I do. And this is probably an opportunity for other people who have never explored that option before to explore that option. And maybe this, I don't think, I don't think things are ever going to be, the way that they were before. Right. And so we have to expand our thinking and get out of our box and, you know, and, and start uh, creating results in, in new ways, which kind of leads me to your book, your uh, most yeah. recent book, which is the art and science of results, the nine most powerful ways to clear blocks to your ultimate success. Yes. So yeah, let's, let's, let's talk about you. You reveal nine powerful I ways do. to clear blocks. Well, these are the nine ways I've been doing in my life. And all I am is a person who, you know, I'm like everybody else. I have dreams and I pursue them. If I find ways to get there faster, I teach them to other people. If it works for them, then I end up writing books about it. A lot of the nine ways that are in here are all part of my coaching program. I have a program called Miracles Coaching. It's at miraclescoaching.com. And the nine ways are the nine ways I use. And some of them people will know. They've heard of tapping, for example, the EFT mm -hmm. method, emotional freedom technique. I love tapping. I was doing it when Roger Callahan taught it to me when it was TFT, thought field therapy, decades mm -hmm. ago. But it's a technique that I write about in the book because I know it works. And I do it virtually every day. If I find myself falling into anxiety or if I have an ache or a pain or I don't know, any sort of block, 
I go to tapping is one of my nine techniques. Mm -hmm. Another one of the techniques I go to, which is also in the book, and I know you know it because you're a fan of it, and that's Ho'oponopono. Yes. Ho'oponopono, I wrote two books on it. Many people know it because the first one. You also have your certification training in it. Yeah. Yeah. I got Zero Limits. At Zero was the follow-up book. There's lots of certification programs on it. I did three live events with Dr. Hulen, who was the therapist who taught it to me. Well, Ho'oponopono is a clearing technique, and I do it all the time. I do it today. In fact, I'm doing it right now because it's become automated, and it's the background loop, if you will, in my brain. It's the self-talk going on, and that's basically, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, those four key phrases, but it's based in a Hawaiian philosophy and tradition that's designed to remove, erase, delete blocks, which are perceptions, Mm -hmm. which are beliefs, which they call data in our subconscious mind. And so that's another one of the techniques that are in there. But the book, The Art and Science of Results, is how do you get results, which is what I'm all about. I don't want to just feel good, which is feeling good (laughs) is fantastic. We all want to feel good. There's no doubt about it. (laughs) I actually want a result. I actually want to know, how do you write a book? And once I learned how, I teach other people. I want to know, like you mentioned, I'm a singer-songwriter. Six years ago, it was on my bucket list to be a musician. And I decided to go for it. But then I didn't know how to go for it because I had never had musical training. I didn't play any instrument but a campfire harmonica. I had a guitar, new three chords, but I didn't know how to write songs. I didn't know how to sing. I didn't even sing in the shower. I didn't sing karaoke. didn't sing behind the wheel of the car. Didn't have a band. Didn't have anything. But I knew that there's ways to learn it. When you mentioned Mm -hmm. earlier about we're all in our room and we can do something, one of the greatest things we can do is go right over to YouTube and whatever we've wanted to learn at any point in our life, just type in how to fill in the blank. It's so true. I've learned so much from YouTube. (laughs) It is free. It's so remarkable. What a time that we live in that we can have this at our fingertips When I wanted to learn how to play the saxophone, which was also on my wish list, I bought a saxophone before I knew how to play it. And I got a saxophone, it arrived, and I looked at it thinking, what do I do? I didn't know know how to put the mouthpiece on. You know, there's a reed, there's a mouthpiece, it somehow goes into the saxophone. I went to YouTube and typed in, how do I put a reed on a saxophone? Mm -hmm. And some kind soul had made a video and walked me through it, and I did it that very evening. And so the book is all about different ways to get clear so we can pursue whatever it is we want, so we can actually get the results that we want. Because I'm, bottom line, an entrepreneur. I want us to get results. I want all of us. Yes, definitely. Just a funny story about the uh, learning how to do things on YouTube. This very, not this computer, the one that I had before this, the Mac. Prior to having a Mac, I used to have a PC. And so the um, on button was uh, very visible and in sight. (laughs) So I opened opened up the... um, I opened up the the Mac and I was like, where's the on button? I have no idea. And I'm like searching and searching and searching. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to turn on, this was authentic. I'm like, I'm going to turn on my, uh, my camera on my other computer to film myself doing this because I literally cannot find it. And it was the funniest thing. It was about a nine minute video before I finally found it. And believe it or not. So I post this on, on YouTube and I've had like a, I've had a mix of results. Some people are like, Oh my God, bless your heart. Thank you so much for posting this because I it literally helped me find the button. I was <laughs> having the same trouble too. Other people are like, Oh my God, it took you forever to get to the point. You know, it's yeah. like, well, the video was for humor, you know? <laughs> right. And I, I say that at the very, very top. It's like, this is for humor. This isn't really a how to, but it literally has helped people to find that dang <laughs> button <laughs> i knew you were going with that because i remember when i reluctantly became a mac person and i'm like where where's the on switch it's, it's very obvious on the pc i know where it's at where is it on the mac exactly so. it's so funny but you know so it's it's an opportunity now for people to uh to go within to to learn to get silent to reconnect uh with people in ways that they that they haven't uh, been doing before, but more importantly to, um, you know, as, as far as what we're talking about is to create results. And I mean, you're 
absolutely the master at creating results. I mean, look at how many accomplishments you have to your name and, yeah. and learn and just, you know, if there's something out there that you want to do, you can do it. If you have the imagination to do it, that's that's really where where it begins, and so. Um, well, let me look at that for a second because I, I love what you're saying, but I want to make sure I take the opportunity to be of the most help to your viewers. Absolutely. And so you mentioned about me being productive. I've written eighty some books. Mm-hmm. I have fifteen albums out. I'm in, I think, twenty some movies. I have more digital products than I could count. I actually have no idea how many there are. I have the Miracles Coaching Program, and of course, I'm traveling when I can travel to countries that didn't even know existed when I was growing up, and I'm a speaker getting all these people come in. And so the question is, how am I so productive? How do I get these results? Yes. And that's why I wrote this book, because what I found out is, yeah, it's one thing to know what you want, and for a lot of people, that's actually a big deal. It's like they sit there going, I don't know what I want. And so for those watching right now, here's your great opportunity to be honest with yourself, look in the mirror and say, what do I want? If I can have, do, or be anything and it could fall out of the sky or I can find it on YouTube and learn how to do it, what do I want? And I really want people to be ruthlessly honest and not dodge the question because my tough love approach is you always know what you want. It's a matter of do you admit it to yourself or not? If you find value in this personal growth related material, I strongly recommend that you sign up for your $1 trial to my personal growth club. Just head on over to personalgrowthclub.com and get a whole month of premium personal growth club video training materials, meditations. You also get six free hypnosis sessions that are valued at over $174, all for this trial of just $1. Even if you cancel, you can keep the six hypnosis sessions. That's my gift to you. And that's how confident I am that you are going to love Personal Growth Club. Go to personalgrowthclub.com and start your $1 one month trial today. I so think we that's pause so there. Well, yeah. and, 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 Mm-hmm. You know, I think some people know what will, will, will they they know what they want, but maybe they they already just write it off because they don't yeah. believe that they can have it. And that's the second part where I'm going. That's what I that's where the nine the nine tools for getting clear blocks is about that because when people say I I don't know how or I'm too old, I'm too young, I'm too fat, I'm too thin, I don't have the education, don't have the experience, don't have the money, don't have the contacts, don't have, they can go on forever with those limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. And that's what needs clear. So let me, let me give my own example here. First, one of the reasons I can write books pretty quickly, actually, when you asked me to be on as a guest, I said, can we talk about my new book, which was Money Love Speed. But then when we booked, which was just a week or two later to actually do this, I said, well, now my latest book is The Art and Science of Results. So how the heck does that happen? It happens because I do not have mental interference between an idea and the production of the idea. When a book idea comes to me, I've learned money loves speed. Sit down and start writing it. Get it done. Mm -hmm. I get it done. There isn't any self-talk to get in the way, but I want to confess, when I turned 60, which was six and a half years ago, and I decided I wanted to be a musician, I stated my intention. I'm going to record my own music. But the very first thing that happened was fear. Mm -hmm. Who am I to sing? I've never sung. I may not have a good voice. People may not like me. I may not know how to write songs. What if I can't get a band together? What if I embarrass myself? What if I ruin my reputation? I've got a reputation as an author. I come out as a singer-songwriter, and what if I destroy everything I've worked for? All of this was in my head. And you know what? I could not make any music while that was in my head. No. But the first thing I'm confessing is that whenever you go for something you've never done before, you can expect to have self-doubts. 
-hmm. here I am as a so-called self-help guru in the movie, The Secret, wrote all these books, have all these techniques, and yet I want to be a musician. And the first thing that happens is I collapse in fear. So I think anytime we, no matter where we're at, you know, whether yeah. we're, you know, a billionaire with all the success we could ever possibly imagine, everyone has doubts about, you know, you're, you're not stretching, you're not growing if you don't have doubts. Oh, that is well said. And I totally agree with it. I'm reading a book called Impossible First which is about the one person in history who drag a sled across Antarctica entirely by himself. And wow. when I'm thinking and reading the book, I'm thinking if I chose to do that, I would have a thousand fears and limiting beliefs that would be in the way of me ever publicly announcing I'll even try it. <laughs> Whenever we try to do something we've never done before, there's bound to be that interference. The difference with me and the music is that I knew some of the different nine techniques, including tapping, including ho'oponopono. So I was able to collapse my beliefs and my fears and my limitations. And very quickly, I mean, in six, I think in six years, I recorded 15 albums. Some of them are mentioned in Rolling Stone magazine. I put a band together. My drummer's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, I, I can go on to say what the breakthroughs were. But it's not about me and those breakthroughs. What it is about is about people realizing when you delete those negative beliefs, you accelerate your rate to get the result you want. That's why I put this book together. Mm -hmm. The art and science of results is knowing what you want, listening to the blocks that come up, but then using one of the nine ways to remove the blocks. Because once it's removed, you can now go and proceed quickly to get the result you wanted. And what I love about the idea of your book is it gives you nine different ways. So there's a lot of people that maybe self-hypnosis resonates with them. Maybe it doesn't. And so if, if that's not something that necessarily resonates with them, um, they can use the tapping. They can use the ho'oponopono. They can use the um, myriad, uh, I, I, you know, what are some of the other uh, techniques in your, in your book? Well, one of them is coaching. I mentioned coaching, coaching. In here, and of course, mm -hmm. I have a miracles coaching program, but it doesn't have to be mine. There's lots of people that are doing coaching, they're doing mentoring. I found early on that I got some of the most dramatic, accelerated results when I worked with a coach. Mm -hmm. And that's why I started Miracles Coaching, because I found that it's one thing to try to change by yourself. You mm -hmm. can certainly do it. People do it all the time. They do it with a book. They do it with an audio program. They do it with an online session or course. They, they can change. But it seems easier to me if you have a trained facilitator, somebody who can listen to you objectively, reflect back to you what you're saying and doing, and you can hear it and see it with some sort of detachment. And with a skilled coach, they can actually help you see what your limiting beliefs are. Because for most of us, our limiting beliefs, we don't see as limiting beliefs. We see it as reality. Mm -hmm. We just see, well, this is, this is the way life is. That'll never happen. I'll never meet the love of my life. They don't hear that as a belief. Yeah. And especially it. today, probably there's a lot of people that have limiting beliefs about what they're going to do for making, make, earning a living. You know, right now, so many people just got laid off their jobs and maybe that job could go extinct. It may come back, whatever. But, right. you know, a lot of people are living in fear and doubt about what they're going to do to move forward in their lives. So can we talk about? Absolutely. Some yeah. I saw one of the statistics. And of course, we're making this in 2020. And mm -hmm. I don't know when people are going to listen to this. But what I'm saying and the techniques we're talking about are timeless that can be used at all points in time. Yep. So it doesn't matter when people end up coming to this. The synchronicity will bring them here at the right time they need to hear it. Yes. In this point in time, I heard that the unemployment rate was the largest it's been in decades. And that's like 6 million people have filed for unemployment. And a lot of businesses, restaurants, and so forth, they're not doing any business. They can't allow people in unless they're considered essential to the workforce. They're not working. 
the first thing that I state is I'm incredibly grateful for all the people who are working. There are people at the grocery stores. There are people that are delivering Amazon. I saw Amazon coming to the door as I'm making this recording to you. And then I saw FedEx come to the door as I'm recording to you. And I'm going, these, these drivers are heroes. They are out there in the world. So there's plenty of people that are still working. But the other part of it is the people that are being sent home. I think part of this is that internal soul reflection to find out what is it that you would really love to do. That's the first question. The second is to learn how to apply it to the internet. A decade or so ago, I started a movement to end homelessness in the United States called Operation Yes. And I put a book out called Operation Yes. And part of my philosophy was the first thing people needed to do was rebuild their self-esteem. And so they need to still appreciate themselves and and tell themselves, even without work or a job, you're still good enough. You're still valuable. You're still loved. You're still a child of the universe. You're still whole. You're still complete. And make sure we maintain that sense of internal value. But the second thing is, is to figure out how to create a product or service that you sell online or be an affiliate for somebody who has a product or service you can also sell online. And I know people watching right now might go, I have no idea where to begin. Well, this goes mm-hmm. back to what we talked about earlier. Go to yeah. YouTube or go to Google and type in, how do I put my first website up? Or how do I create my first ebook? or blah, blah, blah. You will find an answer. You will find lots of answers. And most of the time, they'll be absolutely free. So absolutely. I'm looking at this as an opportunity. People may end up going into different fields. Who knows? They may create a whole different job category. That's almost sci-fi like in what its originality is. I can't even predict it, but I'm kind of curious and kind of excited to see what people come up with. Yeah. It, you know, it, I really believe that it's, it's about shifting to meet the new demands of the new economy that is being created right here before our very eyes. And, yeah. and people are, going to be, um, you know, needing to be supported in different ways. And I, I, you know, there, it's an evolution and change is inevitable. Change always happens. And right now we're in the midst of an incredible amount of, of change, unprecedented amount of change than we've ever seen before. And so to me, I look at it like, a lot of people are going to be maybe, um, you know, it just it's just like a, a rearrangement of okay. Yes. So now we need everybody to <laughs> to move over here. <laughs> that is actually a wonderful phrase, a rearrangement. There's some philosophy, especially in Stoicism, that says nothing is ever really lost. It gets recycled. It gets mm-hmm. returned. It gets rearranged. They actually look at lost as as something to the effect of we didn't lose it. We simply returned it, Mm -hmm. meaning that it went back to the great energy field of the world where it got recycled into something else. I don't don't know why this is coming up, but I had seen a squirrel got hit by a car a few weeks ago. And as tragic as it was, the very Mm -hmm. first thing that happened were turkey vultures came and cleaned it up. Mm-hmm. And I was like, how in the world did the universe figure out that balancing, that that was the cleanup crew? And there was a loss, but it was really a recycling, and the squirrel was returned to the great something energy field, and the turkeys came in as part of their job, which nobody told them to go do, they just knew instinctively to go do, go clean that up. Well, I think there's something that's taking place there, not with death, but with the idea of, well, maybe there's a type of death in the sense that the way we were living is dying, and the way Mm -hmm. we're going to live is a rebirth. And maybe it's kind of cool that this is happening around Easter as we're recording this, which is also, depending on your beliefs and philosophies and religion, a time of rebirth. Just interesting conversation. Yeah, it really is. And I think... um yeah, the, the other thought the the other thought that came to my mind was energy is never destroyed. Yes. It, it, yeah, yeah, it's just never destroyed. It yeah. it changes. It, it, it manifests changed. into something else. Yeah. I had and we're always manifesting, right? I mean, um, so 
the question has actually, because I'm also a law of attraction author. Mm -hmm. So the questions come to me and so I'm just going to get your, your take on it. Um, I have my own answer, but I'm curious. So did we create this? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, you know, I hear the questions too, especially from yeah. sometimes from skeptics, sometimes from bitter people, but sometimes from very well-meaning, sincere law of attraction practitioners who really want to know. Mm-hmm. And my, my rule of thumb is, yes, we do attract, but we're not attracting consciously. We're always attracting subconsciously. The subconscious, as you know, that's the powerhouse. That's the data, database. That's the nuclear generator. But we're also not attracting as a solitary person. We get into groups. Way back, if you remember Jane Roberts, who used to channel Seth, Mm -hmm. those early books from Seth really deeply influenced me. And Seth would teach that we are, we attract other people into a group think. And so we pretty much have the same kind of mentality. And that mentality has its own belief systems those belief systems are actually attracting what the group experiences. So it's not one person in the group. It's all the people who have similar beliefs who have now formed a group who are attracting what they think is needed for that particular group. Well, we as a planet are a group. Mm -hmm. And nobody that I know of ever walked around saying, hey, we really need to have a virus come right now. (laughs) You know, nobody put that on their vision board. <laughs> no. Nobody wrote that as an intention. But, but, Victoria, you tell me if you've heard this. I have heard people mumble things like, we need something to happen to shake up the world. We need something like an earthquake or we need a war. I mean, I've actually heard people say this. Mm-hmm. I know way back decades ago when there were a couple of big wars going on in the world, some people said it's good to have a war because it's good for our economy. And a lot of people had similar beliefs which supported the creation of it. Right. So I hope this is making sense because yeah. we, are, we are attracting, but we're not doing it with conscious intent. Nobody that I know of is consciously harming all of us or consciously telling all of us to go to our room. But I'm, I'm willing to bet most of your listeners would agree that we should be making more time to meditate. Well, we've created a way that we all have more time to meditate. Absolutely. That came from a group intention. So to me, we did attract this. Well, in a way, like what you're saying is like when the person says, um, you know, I, I want to work on my patience. <laughs> right. And the universe says, okay. <laughs> and they're going to put all the lines in front of you. They're going to put all the people that... <laughs> <laughs> in yes. front of you, you know, yes. and, and so whatever it is that you feel like you need to work on, you know, usually there's, there's an opportunity <laughs> right. and this is that opportunity. And the other thing too, is my, my take on, you know, if, if we are creating this, you know, a lot of it also just kind of comes from a, a general low vibe that we've been in, you know, we've, had like probably the most, uh, what's the word, um, conf- you know, com- uh, conflict mm. in our, in our society as that, that we've ever had before, as far as politics, as far as That's a good point. people just That's really a hating point. on each other, hating on each other. Yeah. And, uh, and to me, I just feel like, you know, a lot, a lot of that, it's not all gone, but a lot of that right now seems to be getting set aside and people are rising up to see what's actually more important, which is actually life. And that is a great insight, Victoria. I'm glad you brought that up. You are absolutely right. Before this virus, what we were seeing, especially in the political world was a whole lot of people being mean to each other and being violent with each other, at least in terms of what they said. And we all know that the three most powerful energy fields for attracting, if we want to talk about the law of attraction, what really engages the law of attraction is love, hate, and fear. Love, mm-hmm. hate, and fear. They're fiery emotions. And most people have been focused on fear or they've been focused on hate. And where are we right now with the virus? I made a video on Instagram a week or so ago. It's on Facebook too. And it basically said there's two viruses, 
The first one is the one they're warning us about, to go wash your hands, stay six feet away from people, stay inside, and so forth. But the second virus, which I think is worse, is the virus of the mind. Mm -hmm. That's the virus of fear. Mm -hmm. And when we focus on fear, ironically, we lower our immune system, which allows the possibility of the first virus to come and visit us. And so I think being aware, you are right, that a whole lot of people focusing on hate, focusing on negativity, focusing on conflict, focusing on bitterness, kind of was a virus, you know, a virus of negativity. And that virus of negativity has now been manifested because of group thinking. And unless we, I'm not going to say unless, because I know this will pass. I'll just say we have to focus on love. We have to focus on well-being. We have to focus on our connection to spirituality to speed up the evolution of this virus's disappearance. Yeah, because our 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 thinking is is more contagious than any physical virus. Yeah, our thoughts spread like wildfire, not only in our own neurology, but as we speak and and pass that virus on to other people. And so we've been spreading a negative thought virus. We can also spread a positive virus. Yeah, I've been trying to remind people that throughout history, every epidemic, pandemic, virus, plague, whatever, world war, whatever, recession, depression, whatever, it always passes. Mm -hmm. This too will pass. It will. It absolutely will. And go ahead. And 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 the thing is, is that um, you know the the other, you know the other thing that I think about when it comes to manifesting is that whether or not we created this reality or not, right now, what are we what are we creating on? What are we creating right now? Hello, this is Victoria Gallagher. I hope you're enjoying listening to the Power of Your Mind podcast. As a way of thanking you for listening, I'd like to offer you a one-time discount of 35% off your first order at hiptalk.com. Just go to hiptalk.com and enter the code podcast in the discount code area in your cart and you'll receive 35% off your first order. Thank you so much for listening to the Power of Your Mind podcast. And I think that's, well, the point of power is right now. So it's really great that you pointed that out. It brings us back to here. I wrote a book called The Miracle, and I basically said there's two kinds of miracles. And the first kind is the one everybody wants. That's where sudden, suddenly something takes place that was unexpected, and you don't even know how it took place. It's really miraculous. And Ooh, it's shocking. Like and it's sudden. That's the miracle. But there's another miracle. And the other miracle, I think, is far more important, and that's the miracle of now miracle of this moment because this moment is totally perfect this moment is incredible this moment is complete our brains our monkey minds want to go back in time and go well the other moments were kind of better but those moments are gone or our brain wants to say well the future moments are got to be cool whenever they get here but they're not here all we have is right now and not only is this where the moment is but this is the point of power to create the moments we want to attract So if there's one big takeaway that I would want your audience to get, and that's something I'm always reminding myself of, it's to be in the moment with gratitude, Mm -hmm. to be in this moment with gratitude. The more we can be right here and find the things that we are grateful for, sincerely grateful for, whether it's you or me or the internet or air or, you know, your cat or any number of things here, whatever we can be grateful for, that enriches this moment. That helps take away the fear. That increases our immune system. But it also emits, as you were mentioning earlier, that signal to make the next moments match and even be better than this one. So that's what we want to do. This is the miracle focus with gratitude. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah, I'm, I'm grateful to have you on the show and to be able to have this wonderful conversation. I'm grateful for the, you know, for my computer. I'm grateful for the internet working. I'm grateful for my beautiful cats. I actually have three. The other (laughs) ones are a little shy. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm grateful for my morning coffee. I'm grateful yes. for my AirPods. I'm grateful that I have these wonderful listeners tuning in to Power of Your Mind podcast. I'm grateful for Facebook so I can stay connected with my friends. I'm grateful for my iPhone that also helps me to connect with my friends, you know, and, and so there's so many things that we have to be grateful for that the more we focus on that, the more we're going to continue to create more positive things to be grateful for. So. And it's easy to do. It's just looking at this moment, taking a big breath and just, you know, even faking it until you make it at first, you can just say, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for my mouse, which happens to be sitting here. And I'm like, well, I'm not really grateful. But then I go, <laughs> well, with this mouse, I can act, this is actually a doorway to the universe. <laughs> I, I can go anywhere on the planet with this, using Absolutely. it to point, direct, click. And probably your cat, if it was here, would really enjoy playing with it. I mean, <laughs> I'm starting to feel grateful for the, the mouse, which I wasn't grateful for until I focused on it. Absolutely. And this camera, you know, I mean, there's just so many cool things that we have to be grateful for. And really, um, there was enough, there was a quote that just went through my mind, um, actually, and I, and I saw it, Eckhart Tolle, who wrote The Power of Now, mm -hmm. um, was talking about it the other day. And he was talking about the quote from Shakespeare that um, there's neither a good or a bad and thinking makes it so. Yes, and that's makes it so. it's thinking that makes anything good or bad. And so yeah. this moment, what's going on in the world, dare I say, it's not good and it's not bad. It's however we perceive it and choose to, to think about it. And, and I actually say we live in an optical illusion. I, I, I don't think it's one way or the other. We have this objective reality out there. But depending on our mindset, your mindset, my mindset, and everybody else's, we can see it completely differently. I was on a radio show yesterday, and they, uh, they asked me, they said, is there such a thing as reality? And I laughed. That's I a said, good question. No. I said, there is, but the punchline is it's different for every person because the reality you see and the reality I see don't necessarily match. And the dramatic example I give is when I was homeless and when I was in poverty, I looked out into the world and boy, I did not see opportunity. I did not see choice. I did not see abundance. I just saw lack, limitation, scarcity. It was fearful. It was uh, me against the universe. I saw all of that. And today I look out and it's the same freaking universe. But now I see choice. I see opportunity. I see prosperity. I see abundance. I see all kind of things that were there, they were there then too, but I didn't see them. And I didn't see them because of my mindset. So I point out, and it's very scientific, that our brain is filtering what we see. And what we're mm -hmm. filtering it with is our beliefs. And this yeah. is why when it comes right down to it, the art and science of results is all about nine ways to clear beliefs. Yes. And it's the beliefs that is causing us to see the particular reality we see. We don't like the reality we see. Rather than trying to move everything around like chess pieces, go inside, get clear, change that perception, and you'll see the outer changes. Yes, I love that. And that that's a great note to, to begin to wrap this up on. Um, you had mentioned, though, at the, at the time that you were homeless and, and poverty-stricken and you didn't see the opportunities what do you remember was the very first step that you took to, to shift your mindset? Well, it's easy to talk about it now, but at the time I didn't know this was happening. I was learning to pay attention to beliefs. Mm -hmm. I was trapped pretty much in the Dallas Public Library, which was a wonderful place for a book addict to live. But it was also a shame because I had no home, I had no job, I had no car, I had no relationship, I had no money. That was my shelter while I was homeless. And I was reading the self-help literature, the success classics, like The Magic of Believing by Claude Bristol. And of course, They Can Grow Rich and How to I Win. I love that one. I have that on audio. Yeah, there's some classics that have stood the test of time and people should read and reread them or re-listen to them. And I kept hearing that beliefs create reality. And I remember really being stern with myself saying, what in the world would I believe that would create homelessness? Mm. That was the first thing. 
I realized that I, I so admired and put on pedestals legends of American literature like Jack London, who wrote Call of the Wild and Sea Wolf and 50 other books, and Ernest Hemingway, The Old Man in the Sea, and many other books. And an unconscious part of me was modeling their lives. And their lives were self-destructive, alcoholic, and suicidal. Jack London was dead by the time he was 40 years old, by his own hand. Ernest Hemingway was dead by his own hand, but he made it to being a senior citizen. But he wasn't a happy man. He had melodrama in his life. And a part of me thought, I needed to create a life full of that kind of sadness and drama and tragedy in order to be worthy of being a great writer. And when I realized, wait a minute, that's a, that's a belief and that is not serving me. What if I changed the belief? What if I looked around and I found authors who were happy and healthy and well-adjusted and yet prolific and profitable and productive. And when I found those new authors, I still admire Jack Lennon and Ernest Hemingway as authors, but I modeled their writing style, not their lifestyle. So the turning point for me was becoming aware that there were some prime directive operating beliefs in my subconscious. As I made myself aware of them and changed them, life started to get easier. Now remember, that's before the internet, that's before coaching. Coaches back then were just a little league and a football team. Nobody else had <laughs> And so I was doing it on my own. Today, yeah. we have, you know, we have you, we have this, we have YouTube, we have my books, we have libraries of information and all kinds of tools and techniques that can help us along. But for me back then, it was looking at my beliefs and slowly. It's, it's so amazing and incredible that you had that insight to basically um, just own it and take responsibility. And I believe that it really does start there with that uh, that level of honesty with, with yourself. What have I been thinking that's been creating this? And if a person can get themselves to ask that question, that is more empowering than anything else because if you have the wherewithal to understand that you, you're thinking created where you're at right now, then it's exciting because you realize that, whoa, all I have to do is – think about something different that I want for myself, the results that I want, process those limiting beliefs, of course, and, and you have the exact same powerful mind to create whatever you want. So Well said. Well said. I know, and this may be useful to people, back then when I was trying to figure out what are my beliefs, I had been told, and, and teachers still say it today, Look at what you have. If you look at what you have, that is what you believe. Mm -hmm. And so when I lived in a dump, when I got out of homelessness and I was in poverty, I lived in a it was tiny little room where the toilet and the TV and a hot plate were all in the same room. Same room. Wow. And it was $200 a month, and it was everything in the world to pay $200 a month. And many months I was late, sometimes months late for a month payment. Mm -hmm. So during that time, I'd look and go, what in the world would I believe? And I remember thinking things like, well, money must be scarce. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I talk about that in my other new book, you know, Money Loves Speed. Because that's a belief. But when you are in it and you're living it, you don't know it's a belief until you stop to question it. Because it just seems like that's the way it is. This is life. Money is scarce. No. Yes. Money is scarce is, put it in quotes, is a belief. It's not a fact. But it took that kind of soul searching. And I really do think you have to be ruthlessly honest with yourself. It's really easy to deceive yourself, self-sabotage yourself, and sidestep your own good, which is why sometimes it's good to have a coach. But you can do it. Anybody can do it. Absolutely. Yes. And especially with the help of your book, the art and science of results and that's going to help there's nine different ways in there to clear your beliefs and so i strongly suggest that you run over to amazon and grab yourself a copy of that book and also you can go to uh dr joe's website mrfire.com um you can also go to his facebook page which is Joe dot Vitali. Uh, is that a dot nine four at the end of that or 
No, uh, the Facebook okay. page is Dr. Joe Vitale. D- Dr. R- Joe Vitale. Okay. Yeah, Dr. Joe Vitale. Joe Vitale. And uh, again, the book, The Art and Science of Results is available at Amazon and uh, wherever books are sold, I imagine. And so thank you so, so much for this incredible, wonderful conversation. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. I'm sure, I'm sure I'll have you on the show again a year from now and you'll have 109 books. And- right. Right. <laughs> it's always a joy to talk to you. And I finally got to meet your kitty cat. So I, I feel even more lucky here that I got Emerald rubbing off on me. So thank you. <laughs> Godspeed to all your viewers. Thank you. Thank you. If you enjoyed today's episode, please share it with your friends. And once again, be sure to subscribe to the Power of Your Mind podcast if not already. We can be found as Hip Talk on all our social media accounts. So like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, subscribe on YouTube, and sign up for your free self hypnosis video training course at hiptalk.com. Be sure to subscribe to the Power of Your Mind podcast and you'll be instantly notified the moment the next podcast becomes available. Also, please be sure to leave a rating and a review to tell us how you're enjoying these episodes and that way you're making a contribution toward others getting to share in this valuable information. Thank you so much and I'll talk to you soon. You've been listening to the Power of Your Mind podcast brought to you by HipTalk.com, Personal Growth Club, and HypnoCloud apps available at iTunes.